So this is the first video in the mathematics of elections. In this video, we're going to talk about, we're going to cover the basic elements of an election. In the next series of videos, we're going to get into voting methods. And then finally, the last section, we're going to talk about the fairness of elections. So let's say, for example, we have a math club and they're holding an election for the uh, club president. So with any election, we're going to start off with the candidates, right? So let's just say we have Anna, Bob, Cora, and Dan, who's running for the uh, club president. So we have the candidates. And the thing or the means to which voters are expressing their opinion or casting their vote is called a ballot. So once all the voters cast their ballots, uh, the voting method uh, is the method that we use to tabulate the ballots and decide on a winner. But it's a little bit more complicated than just the ballots and the voting method. This is actually just a single choice ballot. So this is a very basic ballot and it's the most common ballot. Uh, single choice, as the name implies, uh, this is where you, you can only choose one person, right? So for example, let's say the particular voter likes Bob, they can only choose Bob, they can't choose more than one person, right? Or if they like Anna. There are more complicated ballots. Uh, there's something called a preference ballot. And this is the ballot that we're throughout the entire um, uh, chapter, we're going to talk, we're going to be uh, looking at this type of ballot the most often. So a preference ballot pretty much uh, it tells you to list your favorite candidates from first to last, right? From fav most favorite to least favorite. So in this case, there's four candidates. So let's just say uh, this particular person, voter, said they like Dan the most, followed by Bob, followed by Cora, and then Anna. And then the last type of ballot uh, that we're going to see is a truncated preference ballot. So it's pretty much a preference ballot, but then here you're just choosing the top three candidates, right? You're you're listing the top three candidates in order of preference. So for example, you might have a voter say they prefer Cora, Cora is your, their favorite, and then followed by Bob, followed by Anna. So the single choice ballot is um, only, can only be used for winner only elections. So what do I mean by winner only elections? So those are elections where you have one winner only. So, for example, like the president of a club, um, the preference ballot and the truncated preference ballot can be used for winner only and for full ranking or partial ranking. So full ranking and partial ranking or the preference ballot, it can be used for things where you're you're voting on uh, on multiple positions. So, for example, let's just say that. Um, we collect all the ballots and the, the first position was, so the, the person, the candidate with the most votes um, in the first position, they would be the president and then the second one would be the, would be the vice president. The third most uh, preferred candidate would be the treasurer and then the last one would be, say, the secretary, right? So with a truncated, uh, the difference with the truncated is that uh, you might just have three positions and you're voting for the best of the top three would get those positions. All right, so once the voters cast their votes, um, there's one more thing in this section that you need to know that's very important. So once they cast your vote, let's just say we, we compile, we pile the, the uh, ballots into, um, you know, to all their uh, similar ballots. So for example, this first pile here represents those who preferred Anna first, and then Bob, Cor, and then Dan in that order. So all of these, this pile, all these voters, their preference was as such. Uh, ten people, ten voters, they prefer Cora, Bob, Dan, and then Anna last, and then so on. So let's just say the distribution was 14 people in this pile, 10, 8, 4, and then 1. So just like that. So... Um, the next thing that we're going to look at, which you have to be solid on moving forward, is something called a preference schedule. So a preference schedule is pretty much um, a table that lists these piles in a nice schedule or table. 
as such. So each of these columns represents a pile. And um, the, each pile here represents uh, what each of those 14 people, so for example, this pile prefer, right? A, B, C, and D. So these are short for Anna, Bob, Cora, and Dan, and so on, right? So this pile represents this column, this pile represents that column, this one for this one, and so on. And then these rows, they, they're just the first, second, third, fourth positions for each of the different uh, piles. All right, so with a preference schedule, there's three things that you can tell from the preference schedule, right? So a lot of times when you're working out the problems, you're only going to be given the preference schedule and you have to be able to know how to read it uh, and then just take out or extract three very, very important information. So the first one is the candidates. So take note, if you just were given hand to this, you should be able to decide that or determine that there are four candidates, right? A, B, C, and D. The next thing you need to know is the total number of voters. So there are 37 voters here. Now, how do I get that? Well, I know that in this pile, there are 14 people who voted with that order, right? With that preference. There's 10 people who, with this preference, eight, four, one for this one, right? So all I have to do is just add the values over here, up here to get the total number of voters. So we get uh, 14 plus 10 plus eight plus four plus one gives me 37. And then the last thing you need to know, or the last information you can extract from the preference schedule is the number of piles, right? So these, each of these column represents a pile, and there are five piles. So five different preference order for that the voters um, kind of created, or right? All right, so let's go ahead and um, take a look at this preference ballot. And I want you guys to pause the video for a moment and answer these three questions. So how many candidates are there for this preference ballot? How many votes submitted? Uh, how many voters submitted a ballot? Uh, how many polls were the ballots organized? So go ahead and pause the video as you answer these questions. Okay, so now how many candidates are there? So let's see. We know that each of these represents a candidate. We have A, B, C, D, and E. So that's five candidates. All right. And then the next one is how many voters submitted a ballot? So we know that each of these represents a pile. And in this first pile, 93, there were 93 ballots for the different, for 93 voters uh, who casted the ballot in this preference, right? A being first, B, C, D, followed by E, and then 44 in these piles. So essentially, we're going to add these numbers to get the total number of voters um, on here. So the total number of voters in this election. All right, so let me just go ahead and, and add that up pretty fast. So we have 93 plus 44. Oops, try it again. 93, 93 plus 44 plus 10 plus 30 plus 42 and then plus that's a 81 okay so we get 300 so there are 300 voters who submitted a ballot and finally how many piles were the ballots organized into well each of these column represents a, a, a pile so we have one two three four five and six all right so that's it for uh, this section it's a pretty quick check section uh, the main important, the most important thing is that you know how to read this preference schedule. So hopefully you found that helpful.